What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds. So I have for you episode 6 of my Let's Build Wolverhampton series. If you cast your minds back to episode 5 that was all about the lower section of the high street and this one is all about the upper high street. I know it's confusing isn't it? So if we remind ourselves last time the lower section of high street was below the church and this is all about the section above the church. Now I haven't got round to completing the entirety of the high street in this one episode so it's going to be split up into two parts you are now watching part one so without further ado let's get into the build and you guys can see how much i've done to the high street already and we can sort of talk about what's planned in the future okay so the first building in question on the high street stands on the corner of market square and the main road itself now eagle-eyed viewers may remember there actually has already been a building on this site and that was removed um, quite a while ago now. I'd actually mentioned about removing it in, I think, my Warhampton in review video, 2019 in review. Well, I took a little wander around the town and I went, you know what, I don't like that building, let's remove it. So the building that has replaced it is the headquarters, or the, sorry, the Warhampton branch of the Whiteburg City Building Company. Now, you may be thinking to yourselves, hang on. Where, where is this going? Yes, so this is the in-canon, in-game version of WBC Builds. So it's shortened down to WBC Building Co. And they are responsible for planning, designing, and sort of doing all of the building of a lot of the main sort of structures and buildings throughout the entirety of Whiteburg. And what better way to signify their approach and their sort of stance in Wolhampton than to build this beautiful neoclassical building complete with a copla and a flag sitting here overlooking the town hall and the sort of the, sorry the mayor's house and the town market square. I, I love it. I think it's worked quite nicely. I've gone for uh, white concrete powder as the main wall and mixed up with a little bit of quartz and diorite for the detailing i must say it does hold such a commanding position on this spot now you may be thinking as well hang on there's like three different coplas in this town so far and to me that just signifies one tons of georgian architecture lying around and two it's definitely part of the style and it's actually what i wanted to go for if you yeah if you want to go down with a style like i have done here you've got to double down or even triple down and just really go with it so the meme of having the tramways not being completed past the church is now finally over guys we have built a little more of a section of the tram but that stops right there and that goes no further. The idea is to have a couple of tram stops along it. You'll see later on in the video I build the main park. So there was going to be an idea of building a tram stop there. Didn't get around to it in this video, but in part two we'll add that in front of the department store. That's right, so there's going to be a nice big Victorian department store in part two. That's the whole reason I didn't put it in this video, because I thought it would get lost amongst all these other amazing buildings. So what I'm building here is known as Mayflower Terrace. It's upon Devonport Street and it's just a copy and paste job of one of the houses I built while procrastinating not building the train station. That's right, I did build a townhouse while sort of not wanting to build the train station. I know, who would have thought it? Now, we move on to the crowning glory of this build of the whole town. This is the Woolhampton Banking Corporation's HQ. Now, again, eagle-eyed viewers, will recognize this name and also will recognize the building. So this was built in episode two of my time-lapse Tuesday sessions. And I built it on the user block server uh, owned by Andy as Yoda. And it's based on this building here uh, in, in Bournemouth. I think it's the NatWest Bank. And I thought, you know what? Why not bring it on over? Why not give it a prominent position here in Wolhampton? Because it is obviously the HQ of this banking corporation. If we cast our minds back to last episode as well, I mentioned how Wolhampton Banking Group Corporation, I think that's what I called it, their first branch is just down the high street past the town hall. So what better way than to cement their sort of stance in town to put this huge six-story building right here, right in the center. I know, it's massive. The thing is, I was a little bit worried. I didn't want to build an absolutely humongous building because I didn't want it to drown out the rest and take away too much. But because I've gone for quite a subtle tone, I've, I've used strip birch with a lot of um, oak detailing and sandstone as well, smooth sandstone all across it. Uh, it. It blends in well. 
It has got quite a French feel about it. Once we put the roof on, you'll notice it's, it's got a mansard roof uh, and dormers, and it feels quite French. But I believe that's the, the style. It's a lovely Victorian banking building itself. So this building acts as the main bank for the town and also for people to come and work at. And the upper floors are mainly apartments. So who wouldn't want to live in one of these penthouse apartments overlooking the whole of Wolverhampton? You've got the look over the train station that way and the Crescent. And then behind us, you've got the Market Square, Bridge Street, and all other manner of things. So you know what? If I was going to live in this town anywhere, I would live right here. Mainly because it'd be opposite my office as well, so that'd be easy for me just to go, okay, move on over to the other side of the street. But that's another story. So building this again, it was actually really nice because it gave me an opportunity to change up a few things I did wrong. Well, not wrong, but didn't like about the last one. So I've done that and also transferring it from using a texture pack into using the default textures and having to sort of mirror the, the stone colors and that was really fun. It was different. Um, so I, I enjoyed building this one. And like I said, it is the main central bank for the entirety of the town. And it's also the biggest and largest banking company in the whole of the world, in, in our world, in, in, in this country of Whiteburg, that it actually brings a lot of traffic in. And it's the whole reason it's here and it brings in a lot of work. Now what I'm doing is just upgrading a few buildings around here as well, you'll see me do that later on. So the Portmore Arms has gained an extra story and been turned into a bit more of a Georgian looking building. So onto the roof here, we've got these beautiful dormers going around and a mansard roof. Now, when it comes to 1.16 release time, obviously we can use the new blackstone blocks here on the roof to give the slate quite a nice colouring. Uh, and that would work so much better for this building. But I do think stone bricks work perfectly fine for what they're intended for here. Okay, moving on now to a few more buildings along the high street. So I wanted to go for a mix of Victorian and Georgian buildings. What you're seeing me building right now is a, a bow windowed Victorian, well, early Victorian, late Georgian building. Now I've used inspiration from Southampton uh, for that. I've seen a lot of pictures of the high street of Southampton before it was bombed out in the war and that's kind of what I'm going for for a lot of these feels along this high street. I know originally I said to myself and I said to you guys, I wanted to design the high street to be similar to that of Limington's high street and I have gone away from the idea of doing that. Further up the high street, once we get out of this main central sort of epicentre of town, buildings will start to go down to about two to one storeys and it'll be a bit more like Lymington. Uh, and what you're seeing here are these larger buildings which I've always wanted to build just because they actually they really echo the style perfectly well. So what we're moving on to now is the Theatre Royal. So this was built in the 1890s just after the new connections to Whiteburg were built at the train station and this offers a large venue for people to come and watch their theatre plays, their operas, their musicals, you know whatever you want to do in Edwardian England, well, Edwardian Whiteburg. So this is based on this building here. This is the Theatre Royal, I believe, in Portsmouth. A new building-ish. It's not ancient, but it's it's like late Victorian. And I thought it looked really nice. It's got this big conservatory over the front, which obviously is a place to allow people to congregate in. There's probably a bar up there as well. So I guess we can class this place as a pub. You may be wondering as well, why have we not built any pubs yet? We're getting on to that. There is definitely a few pubs in this high street build. Of course there is. We're looking at one right now, the grey one there. Uh, that's the Banker's Arms. It was built in the original Whiteburg, copied over here, was meant to be part of the Christmas uh, episode. We never came to it, we forgot about it, and it's annoying because I've done the insides for it. But anyway, I've changed it up a little bit, edited it a little bit more so it fits in with the street a bit better. But yeah, the theatre turned out really nicely. I was toying around with getting some flags on here again, but it didn't really work out. And the conservatory was quite a pickle to do, but in the end, I, I liked it. Now, I tried to fit in as much diorite into this quartz as possible, just to take the edge of the quartz off. And do you know what? I think it works really well. A lot of people are quite scared to use diorite, but I think if you're using it to sort of detail against white or grey, it works perfectly fine. Don't be scared to use it. So just building the roof here. It's a very large building. I would like to do the interior of this one day, just with all the seats sat around and the sort of arcade above and the little viewing pods are on the side. You know what you're sort of when you've been to an old theatre, you know what I mean. So 
that one sits lovely on the high street there. So moving on now to the other side of the road, going to add a few more buildings here. These are just mainly your, your common or garden shops. So we've got a couple of Victorian, a couple of Georgian again. Uh, I've been trying around sort of a few different block variants or block types. Like I said, diorite's my new favourite at the moment, and so it's stripped birch logs. Um, they do work quite nicely together, but uh, I'm just trying all the things under the sun just to get a better understanding of how the blocks work, especially when trying to build Victorian stuff. A lot of people ask me quite regularly, like, what is your sort of main advice when it comes to building Victorian buildings? And I usually say, don't over detail stuff because you don't need to. So if you look back at pictures of, you know, early Victorian stuff or even sketches, you see it's, it's all very plain and very sort of just flat. And that's the idea. These buildings are built in accordance with, like, the classical ideas. So you've got straight flat edges, cornices, and then you've also got these bay windows in the middle here. We've got a wide selection of them along here. And then in this final building here, there is a pagoda-styled sort of roof and that was very common in the regency period so that's kind of when these buildings were built in the 18 1810s uh when it when this area was developed quite nicely so you can see there's nothing not much space behind each building i did that on purpose because this plot isn't very big but i didn't want the shops backing on to the houses and the uh, train station behind because i wanted to put a few more terrace houses in there we'll get onto those in a bit what we're moving on to now is the Grand Hotel. So this was a Regency Hotel built in 1812, 100 years before we are currently in Wolverhampton, and it's built in accordance with the Regency style, and it's got this beautiful double-breasted bay window front, which is ideally looking towards the train station now, but originally it did not. Originally it looked towards a park, which is no longer there. The park was con uh, not condemned, but consumed by the train station, along with a lot of the views over the canal. So this this idea here is this, this building was your well-to-do's sort of hotel. So you'll see there's a nice green plot to the right. That becomes Jubilee Park later on in this video. So at least they do have a nice view out of one side of the building now across the nice park. But to be honest, I would definitely choose a room in the front facing section and look across the trains, watch them come and go like a like a train spotter. I'm not a train spotter, don't, don't question that. Now, this building here is a mix up between your stuccoed front and these nice sandy colored uh, bricks. So I've gone for oak um, oak planks for this. And I think it works quite nicely. I've also gone for the cheeky trick of using uh, iron trapdoors, which obviously you can do in creative quite easily, but in survival it's a pickle to do. I mean you've got to have a lot of redstone and a lot of other little tricks under your belt. So what we're moving on to now is known as Canal View Terraced. Now as I mentioned, the train station Et up a lot of the views of the canal. So when these were built in the 18 and 1790s, there we go, they were looking straight over the canal, but nowadays they are not. And for me, these are my first proper Georgian brick uh, terraced houses I've done in a long time, and I really enjoyed how they came out. Used quite a bit of granite in there just to sort of offset the brick. So we're moving on now to the pub. And I, I warned you, I knew we were going to get a pub coming up in this video at some point. So this building here is attached-ish to the uh, bank next to it. It's known as the Treasury. So this is where all the bank workers would come, get quite drunk on a Friday night, and then get back on the train to Whiteburg and leave the town alone. But it's also for all the locals living around here, and it's directly opposite a hotel which possibly has a bar in it. It's also next to a pub which definitely has a bar on it. So it's quite a drunken corner this, but what do you really expect for me building a town? So the idea here is it's using the same architectural designs and styles as the building next door. I believe it was built by the same architects, WBC Building Company. So yeah, I guess they built it anyway. And it's built in this nice Victorian style, a little less French, a little bit more English Victorian. It does have a little sort of New york -y vibe just in its height and a quite large cornice on it. But yeah, I'm excited now to get on to part two of this. Obviously, I haven't actually started building it yet, and it doesn't exist. But my ideas for it is, you see the way the park is being formed now, Jubilee Park, as mentioned earlier. There'll be a lovely row of buildings along that street as well. And behind us here, you see the edges of a little uh, construction site, which we filled in with a beautiful terrace of houses. 
So let's move on now to actually talking about what Jubilee Park is. So Jubilee Park was built uh, in the 1860s. Uh, and it was an upgraded version of another park that once existed here, known as the Imperial Park, but that fell out of fashion with imperialism sort of dying off, uh, and it became the Jubilee Park to honour the ruler at the time's Jubilee. I believe it was their 60th Jubilee. Now, the park itself is quite skinny, but we have a couple of trees in it, and nice flower beds dotted around and do you know what it really sets off the train station just having a few trees in front of it now i knew i didn't want the train station completely blocked by houses and buildings so having a park out front has always been the plan for this plot you see the grand hotel there as well with its windows facing this way with all the beautiful vistas it can get now to wrap this episode up I'm going to be building the cenotaph. So this is, like we have in real life, the memorial area. So people gather here on the day of remembrance and issue, you know, their remembrance for those who died in wars. So guys, I'd like to say thank you for watching part one of our Victorian uh, High Street video. And next time we'll be building, as I mentioned, the uh, department store and a few other buildings along the street along with some townhouses and just tidying things up so thank you guys for watching i'm going to leave you now with a showcase uh, cinematic i hope you enjoy that and i hope you've enjoyed this video i'll catch you next time goodbye Thank you.